Okay, we got our homework here for tree diagrams. It's probability day two. A king's random <laughs> instead of a king's ransom. <laughs> it's clever. In a standard deck of 52 cards, you pick two cards at random. Find the chance of getting two kings. Find the probability of picking a king on your first and not picking a king on your second. Find the probability of not picking a king on your first and picking a king on your second. Find the probability of both cards not being a king. That's a lot of questions. So let's start with this. 52 cards. You pick two cards at random. Find the chance of getting everything that's here is talking about getting a king or not a king. So we draw this tree diagram. Our first card that we pick, it's either a king or it's the complement of a king. It's not a king. Now, if you know, there are four kings in a deck. So the chance of you getting a king on the first try are four out of 52 which means the chance of you not getting a king, the complement, are the rest of the cards, which is 48 out of 52. Now this, these events, when we pick a second card, these are dependent, depend, and events, which means the second card is influenced by the first because we are picking two cards. Once you get one card, you're going to keep it in your hand. You're not going to put it back. So that means once you get to this point, there are 51 cards left. So what's the chances that the second card is also a king? Now we're assuming that you've already chosen a king. So if you have one king, how many kings are left? There are three kings out of a uh, deck of 51 cards. So if you choose this path, if you chose a king, and then what's the chances the second card is not a king? There are 51 cards left. 48 of those are not kings. 3 and 48 is 51. That This is uh, working out. If you go along this bottom path, if you didn't get a king the first time, you could get a king the second time or not a king the second time. If you didn't get a king... There are, still, there are still four kings left out of 51. And if you didn't get a king the first time, how many not kings are left? Only 47, because you've chosen one of the not kings out of 51. Find the probability of picking a king on your first and not picking a king on your second. King, not a king. That's right here. So the probability of getting a king followed by not a king. That's going to be 4 out of 52 times 48 out of 51. Using a calculator, that is 192 out of 2652. What's the probability of getting a king on your first and not a king on your second? We just did that. Let me highlight it. Oh, I missed the first question. The first question is, what's the chance of getting two kings? Well, that's this top path right here. So the probability of getting a king and a king, that's 4 out of 52 times 3 out of 51. When you follow a path, you multiply. That's 12 out of 2,652. Do not reduce these. That would just be, it would not be good. Second question here was find the probability of picking a king on your first and not a king on your second. That's this path, which we've already gotten. Next question of not getting a king on your first and picking a king on your second. Not a king and then a king. So it's the complement of a king followed by a king. That would be 48 out of 52 times 4 out of 51. That is the same 
multiplication that was above this, same numbers in a different order. And then the final question, find the probability of both cards not being kings. That's this bottom path. That's the most likely by far. That's 48 out of 52 times 47 out of 52. I should probably write a little neater. That is 2,256 out of 2,652. If you take the time to add 12 and 192 and 192 and 1256, that will total 2,652, which means we have got all the possibilities here of getting kings or not kings. A heart returned. In a standard deck of 52 cards, you randomly pick a card, replace it, and then randomly pick another card. Since you're replacing the card, these are independent events. Find the chance of getting two hearts. Find the probability of picking a heart on your first and not a heart on your second. Find the probability of not getting a heart on your first and getting a heart on your second. Find the chances of both of them not being hearts. So we want to make a tree diagram for this, getting hearts and the complement of a heart. We could get a heart. We could get the complement, which is not a heart. Picking two cards, so after you get a heart, your second card could also be a heart, or maybe it's not. If you don't get a heart on your first card, maybe your second one is. Maybe your second one isn't. Let's color my hearts. Let's not color my not hearts. So how many hearts are in, a, are in a deck of cards? Well, there are four different suits. There's hearts, diamonds, there are uh, spades, and clubs. So a quarter of the cards are hearts. That is 13 out of 52 are hearts. Well, how many of those are not hearts? Well, it's the rest, which is 39 out of 52. 13 times 3 is 39. Now, once you've gotten a card that was a heart, you put it back in the deck. So there's still 52 cards left in the deck. The second card has an equal chance of being selected, 52, uh, 13 out of 52. You could have also not got a heart the second time. All the cards are replaced. That's 39 out of 52. Chance of you getting a heart, independent events. Chance of you not getting a heart, I'm sorry, this is 13, not 39. Chance of you not getting a heart would be 39 out of 52. And then up here, you are asked every combination of these. So what's the chances that you get a heart and then a heart? Well, that's 13 out of 52 times 13 out of 52 which is 169 out of 2,704. Let me take a little more time and write neater. What's the chances that we get a heart and then not a heart? It's 13 out of 52 times 39 out of 52. And that product is 507 out of 2,704. What if we get not a heart followed by a heart? Oops, I did that wrong. Not a heart followed by a heart. That would be 39 out of 52 times 13 out of 52, which is 507 out of 2,704. What's the chances that both cards are not hearts? Well, that's 39 out of 52 times 39 out of 52. That's 1,521 out of 2,704.
If you add these numerators together, you will get 2,704. We've answered all four of the questions that were asked up there. Tricycle. Meow, meow. You roll a die three times while riding a tricycle. What's the probability that you get a one on each die? List the relevant sample space. Well, the relevant sample space is that we either get a one or we get the complement of a one. We're doing this three times, so the next time we can get a one or the complement of a one. The last time we can get a one or the complement, we can get a one or the complement. The same thing can be repeated down yonder. So that if we follow these paths, we end up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different paths. It's a lot of writing. So it says list the relevant sample space. We have done that. What's the probability that you get a one on each die? So we got a one and a one and a one. The chance of getting a one on a six-sided die is one out of six. Chances, these are independent events. One does not affect the other. It's one out of six for each of these, so this probability is one out of six times one out of six times one out of six, which is one out of 216. If you rolled a die three times, you would expect to get three ones one time out of 216 tries. Reds. In the standard deck of 52 cards, you are dealt two cards at random. Since you're dealt two cards, these are dependent events. Because once you get the first card in your hand, the second card is influenced because the second card couldn't be the card that you have. Find the chance of getting two red cards. Find the probability of receiving a red card on your first and not on your second, and receiving a red card on your first and a red card on your second, etc. Well, this is talking about either getting a red or not a red. We're getting two cards. So the first card that we're given could be red or it could be not a red. Now half the cards in a deck are red. There are 52 cards in a deck, 26 are red. That means 26 are not red, which you could also call black. Since you're getting the cards and you're not replacing them, once you get your second card, you're choosing from 51 cards. If you've already gotten a red the first time, there's only 25 left because you're holding a red in your hand. If you didn't get a red, or if you got a red the first time, then the number of not reds that are left is still 26. Notice how the numerators add up to the denominator. If you didn't get a red on your first try, you can get a red on your second card or not a red on your second card. If you didn't get a red, 51 cards left, and of those, 26 are red. If you did not get a red the first time and you didn't get a red the second time, that means there are only 25 reds left out of 51. So listing every possibility here, which is what all the questions above ask, the probability of getting a red and a red, that's 26 out of 52 times 25 out of 51. We'll do that calculation in a second. Probability of getting a red followed by the complement of a red is 26 out of 52 times 26 out of 51. Probability of getting a not red followed by a red is 26 out of 51. 26 out of 51. And then finally, the probability of not getting a red and not getting a red to black are 26 out of 51 and 25 out of 51. This first product at the top is 650 out of 2652. 
So is this bottom one. So the same numbers are just written in opposite order. Let me rewrite this. And then the middle products are the same, so the same numbers at 676 out of 2652. 676 out of 2652. If you add those numerators together, they will add up to what the denominator is. Excellent. We got a ton more to do, apparently. In a standard deck of 52 cards, you pick two cards at random. Find the chance of getting two face cards. Since you're picking two cards, it doesn't mention you're replacing it. These are dependent events. So then it asks a bunch of questions for the combinations. It only asks about face cards and not getting a face card. So pick a card, we can get a face card, or we can get the complement of a face card. Second card, you can get a face card or not a face card, the complement. After you picked your first card and it wasn't a face card, your second card could be a face card or it could be the complement of a face card. Now, how many face cards are in a deck? There are 12. Aces have a face, there are four of those. Kings have a face, there are four of those. I'm sorry, aces don't have a face. Kings have a face, queens have a face, jacks have a, fa have a face. That's three different kinds, and there are four beats. That's 12. So there are 12 face cards out of 52. Once you've chosen one of these, you have a face card in your hand. There's only 11 face cards left, and only 51 cards left. If you choose a face card, how many non-face cards are left? 39. No, not 39, 38. Wait a minute. Yeah, there are 12 face cards. So that means there are 38 non-face cards. Some of my numbers on my paper are wrong. No, that's not right. It should be 40. Reason I know that wasn't right is because 12 and 40 have to have to be 52. So now oh, that's good. That's right. What's wrong with my paper, though? Idiot. Idiot. Okay, so we got 12 face cards, 40 not face cards. If you choose a face card first, how many non-face cards are left? Still 40 out of a total of 51 cards. If you choose not a face card, What's the chances that you get a face card in your second turn? Well, there are 12 face cards left, but only 51 cards left. What's the chance that you don't get a face card and then don't get a face card again? There's going to be 39 face cards left out of 51. So this top one, what's the probability of getting a face card and a face card? That's 12 out of 52 times 11 out of 51. What's the chances of getting a face card followed by the complement of a face card, not a face card? 12 out of 52. Followed by 40 out of 51. I'm going to have to make this smaller again. And then this third path, we got 40 out of 52 times 12 out of 51. I should write down what that path represents. That is the probability of getting complement of a face card followed by a face card. And the last one, the probability of getting two non-face cards. That's 40 out of 51 times 30. Sorry, 40 out of 52 times 39 out of 51. Let me check these products. 12 out of 52. Let's do this. 12 times 11. 
is 132. 52 times 51 That is 2,652. Twelve times forty is four eighty. Forty times twelve is four eighty. And forty times thirty nine is 1560. I'm just going to check my math again because my, my notes were wrong. 132 plus 480 plus 480 plus 1560 should be 2652. It is. All right. I like to check anytime I'm uncertain because if those don't add up, I'm in lots of trouble. One add jacks. In a standard deck of 52 cards, you pick a card at random and replace it. That word's important. Replace it means these are independent because you're putting it back. You're not changing the odds. Find the chance of getting two one-eyed jacks. Find the probability of getting a one-eyed jack on your first try and not on your second. This is all about one-eyed jacks and its complement. There are two one-eyed jacks in a deck of cards. That's an I. And then you have the complement of this. And then we pick another card after replacing it. And you could get a one-eyed jack. Or you could get its complement. 52 cards in a deck. Two of those are one-eyed jacks. That means 50 of those are not. Since you're replacing the card, oh, I did this one wrong on my notes as well. Well, that is irritating. Since you're replacing it, you could have two out of 52 the second time. Uh, if you get a jack, a not jack is 50 out of 52 because you're replacing your card. And then you don't get a one-eyed jack. What's the chances that you get a one-eyed jack? Still 2 out of 52. You don't get a one-eyed jack. What's the chance that you get another one? Well, they're independent, so the numbers don't change. So then it asks for the probability of all these combinations, which is every possibility here. So probability of one-eyed jack, I'll abbreviate this with saying, uh, um, how about this, I jack, I jack, that looks terrible. I guess I'll do this. That's 2 out of 52 times 2 out of 52, which is 4 out of 2,704. Not very good odds. Probability of getting a one-eyed jack and not getting a one-eyed jack that's 2 out of 52, followed by 50 out of 52, which is 100 out of 2,704. Probability of getting the complement of a one-eyed jack and a one-eyed jack would be 50 out of 52, followed by 2 out of 52, which is 100 out of 2,704. Probability of getting two cards that are not one-eyed jacks is 50 out of 52, 
times 50 out of 52. which is 2,500 out of 2,704. And the numerators add up, so we are in good shape. Two more. Pentacycle. A die is rolled three times. Well, the rider's on a pentacycle. That's a five-sided cycle, or a five-wheeled cycle. Well, it's probably at least one five landing up. List the relevant sample space. All right. So these are independent events. Well, it's probably that at least one lands up. So I'm going to cheat on this, and I'm going to find the probability of at least... Let's say this, at least a f one of those is a five. That could be taken as one minus the probability that at least one is a five, it's complement, which means one minus the probability that we don't get a five. Now, it says list the relevant sample space let's go super relevant here on your first one you could get a five or the complement of a five i think that's obvious and then on your second one we only thing we care about yeah we could get a five we could get not a five we only care about this path getting no fives so getting no fives Oh, we have, we have to roll this three times. Could do it again and not get a five. We got five out of six chances of not getting a five each time. Which means the probability, this is what it means listing the, the relative sample space. I'm just drawing this path. That's gonna be equal to five out of six times five out of six times five out of six which is 125 out of 216. So the probability of getting at least one five, well, that's going to be 216 out of 216, which is 1, minus 125 out of 216. And that is 91 out of 216. All right, last one, reds. In a standard deck 52 cards, you are dealt five cards. I don't know why this is called reds. Probably because I forgot to change the name from the last one that I called reds. What's the... You are dealt five cards. What's probably the, that at least one card is a heart? So these are dependent events. So the probability of at least one heart, we could think of as one minus the probability that you get no hearts. That's going to be much easier to do this problem if we look at it in that way. So we're dealt five cards. So the first time we can get a heart, what we really care about is not getting a heart. There are 39 non-hearts out of 52. We've already got a card. What's the chances that we don't get a heart again? There's only 51 cards left. We have one of the 39 hearts, so there's 38 hearts. And then our third card, I don't want this to be a P, I want this to be a heart. Not a heart, there's 50 cards left, and there's only 38, there were 38 hearts, we picked one. There's 39, we got one, 38, we got one, now there's only 37 left. 
then there's going to be 36 left out of 49, then there's going to be 35 left out of 48. So to find the probability of having at least one heart is going to be equal to 1 minus 39 out of 52 times 38 out of 51 times 37 out of 50 times 36 out of 49 times 35 out of 48. And instead of getting common denominators and all that jazz, just shove that baby in your calculator and you're going to get 0 0.778, which is 77.8%. That's what that means. All righty. Uh, don't worry about this little fella if it's 2020. Any other year, make sure you do it.